Welcome back. The state of national disaster has been renewed every month on the 15th since March 2020. Trade union Solidarity says it's ready to approach the court. The state of national disaster has been renewed every month on the 15th, as we said. And uh, let's hear now from Solidarity's Research Institute head, Connie Mulder. Mr. Mulder, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us this evening. We appreciate your time. So certainly uh, the impact of COVID of the COVID-19 pandemic um, has reduced. Um, South Africans have learned to live with COVID-19 to a larger extent. Um, is that primarily uh, at the heart um, of your approach to the courts to end the national state of disaster? Um, yes, Anja, I think that's the, the primary reason is um, no one really argued in March or April of 2020 when we went into a state of disaster. For the simple reason we, we were in a state of disaster um, and we had this disaster, but uh, the disaster has now passed for all intents and purposes. If we look at the Omicron wave, that was a Christmas present in that it was much milder and we've got a massive amount of natural immunity along uh, with a couple of million adults who are vaccinated. And from our perspective, uh, this means that uh, the time has now come to start living with the virus. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have a future without COVID. It's not going to go away, but it has to become endemic and it has to become a part of uh, everyday life with uh, like other illnesses in this regard. Um, um, we, we have a flu season every year and we don't go into lockdown for that necessarily. Not that COVID is flu, it's, it's much more serious, but we're now at the phase where it's endemic, where healthcare can very obviously handle it. And now we need this sword that's hanging over the economy to be lifted so that we can finally get to the real disaster, which is uh, what's happened to the economy with jobs. And, um, and in that regard, have it fixed with certainty that you're not going to be shut down um, with immediate effect on a Sunday night. From the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, two years ago almost, we've seen a lot of uncertainty in terms of how this virus changes, um, how uh, it responds to certain treatments. Uh, we know a lot um, of people around the globe have now been double vaccinated. However, South Africa's vaccination numbers are not where we want to see them yet. And so some argue that the national state of disaster allows government to react quickly um, and with the necessary uh, measures to adjust to these changes as the pandemic takes different trajectories, as we see different variants come into play. Do you think that's a fair assessment or do you think or do you agree with some who say that this is an unnecessarily continued assault on the freedoms of ordinary South Africans? Well, I think we're, we're somewhere in the middle there is um, it, it very obviously made sense in April in 2020 to have a state of disaster to be able to react quickly. But we've been in the state of disaster for almost two years now. We've learned a lot about the virus and uh, we are sitting on maybe low vaccination rates. But uh, Prof Shabir Mahdi of the Ministerial Advisory Committee estimates almost 74 percent of South Africans have already had COVID, which means we have massive amounts of natural immunity. And that's we need to shift the debate away from uh, this focus on vaccination to the focus on immunity, which is what we want. Vaccination just mimics natural immunity. And this means that we are now at a point where we should be able to lift the shackles. Um, the state of disaster is by its definition reactive, not proactive. You react to a disaster. You don't stay in a state of disaster in case there's a flood. And um, after the flood, that's when you go into, into the state of disaster. And we're of the opinion the water has now receded. We're at a place where we need to start living with this virus. We need to learn how to handle it endemically. Healthcare needs to adapt, or they've already to a large extent adapted. And that means now is the day to lift the state of disaster. If we feel that we need additional measures, we need to get back to the governance model that South Africa has always followed, which is we have a parliament that has been sort of uh, sidelined for almost two years uh, that needs to start enacting legislation. And then we can get back to the normal governance way. Well, at the moment, with the National Coronavirus Command Council, who, um, especially for our members in tourism and hospitality, who can literally shut down your business on a Sunday night with no recourse. Um, you're, you, you need to close on Monday evening, like on Monday when you find out um, you're, you're closed. Uh, that's, that's not something that facilitates people uh, investing or actually just uh, going forward with the economy. If you're a restaurant, how do you plan how many waiters you should uh, have that week, how many chefs you should have? If you do not have any idea if you're going to, to be shut down, the ones who were the hardest hit is our members in the tourism industry who lost uh, the whole of December's income and who now have uh, international tourists still phoning them and saying, but uh, we don't think it's safe. You're still in, in a state of disaster. How can we uh, book when we don't know if it's going to be cancelled 
uh, at, a, at a moment's notice. And that's the certainty that we're saying. We need to get back to a place where uh, we, we've, we can grow the economy with a certainty that capital forming needs. Comparative to the rest of the world, uh, South Africa is doing quite well at the moment. We still see incredibly high numbers um, in Europe. Um, if you look at the UK, uh, large numbers of infections, not as many hospitalizations under Omicron as we saw before. But these countries are still uh, functioning under a state of disaster. Uh, they are um, much more, uh, much harsher measures in place in a lot of countries around the world. Um, comparative to South Africa here, we no longer have a curfew. And many of those restrictive measures that were in place during many parts of uh, the past two years have now been lifted. Do you think that state of disaster being lifted is primarily, as you said, to give people comfort? Or are there so many practical considerations as well that would make it um, essential relief for, as you said, for instance, the tourism sector? Well, it's, it's a double-edged sword, um, that meaning there are almost no regulations left, which then begs the question, why do we still have a state of disaster if we've got no regulations linked to it at all? Um, why are we still in it? Is it not only comfort for the government in that case? Secondly, comparative to the rest of the world, South Africa had a much more economic damage. We lost millions of jobs. Our unemployment is almost at 40% on the expanded definition. So we don't have the luxury of the reserves that the rest of the world had. We were in a debt crisis before this. And we cannot sit on our hands and, and just continue indefinitely. We need to focus on the crisis of the economy. Uh, the regulations that are still in place do still have a imp an impact on the tourism sector specifically, on artists, which we also represent, and then on the hospitality industry. And it, the main problem there is that you, you just don't know. You have no idea if in six months uh, you're going to find out one Sunday evening your restaurant is closed on Monday or your liquor shop or your, your tourism, um, uh, your, your tour operator. And that's the primary thing that we're saying. The disaster has passed. That means the state of disaster needs to also pass. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. That was Head of Solidarity's Research Institute, Corny Mulder.